Hey, welcome back. So today I thought we'd do something a little different, check out chat GPT and see what it knows about how let loose. The new chat. I'm sure you guys probably know some tricks to using this. I'm just going to go for it. What is hell let loose? Hell Let Loose is a first-person shooter video game developed and published by Black Matter. It is set during World War II and features realistic battles on large scales, with up to 100 players on each side. No, that's as a whole. The game includes a variety of authentic weapons and vehicles, as well as detailed map and terrain systems. Hell Let Loose was released in 2019 on Steam Early Access and officially launched in 2020. So far, so good. Um, what should a new player expect when playing Hell Let Loose? A new player can expect a realistic and intense World War II themed first person shooter experience when playing Hell Let Loose. The game features large scale battles with up to 100 players on each side and a variety of authentic weapons and vehicles. Players are able to take on different roles, such as soldiers, medics, engineers, and scouts, each with their own unique abilities and equipment. The game's map and terrain system is also quite detailed, and players will have to take this into account and environment, account the environment and terrain while engaging in battles. The game encourages teamwork, communication, and strategic thinking. Players will have to work together with their team in order to secure objectives and call in reinforcements, supplies, and artillery support. As a new player, expect a steep learning curve. The gameplay is quite complex and realistic. It will take some time to master the game mechanics and understand the different roles. The game is also a bit less fast-paced than other FPS games, and the battles can take quite a while to play out. That's an incredible paragraph, and I'm you know, I, I understand that ChatGPT is taking information from wherever it can find it, I'm sure. But, I mean, that's that's exactly how I would word the game. Like, <laughs> it's, that's pretty amusing. All right, so let's find this out. What is the most important roles in Hell Let Loose? In Hell Let Loose, all roles are important and contribute to the team's success in different ways. However, some roles are considered to be more critical to the team's overall strategy and success than others. Some of the most important roles in the game include Squad Leader. Squad Leader is responsible for leading a team of players and communicating objects and strategy to them. They also have the ability to call for reinforcements, supplies, and artillery support. Medic. The medic is responsible for keeping the team's soldiers alive and healthy. They can revive fallen players and provide them with medical supplies. Without a medic, the team will quickly lose players and be at a disadvantage. Engineer. The engineer is responsible for constructing and repairing fortifications and vehicles. They can also lay mines and place barbed wire to slow down the enemy. Without engineers, the team's defenses will be weaker and the vehicles will not be able to be repaired. Scout. I, I assume they're talking about the spotter. The scout is responsible for, for, for providing information about the enemy's position and movements. They can spot enemies at a distance and call out their locations to the team. Without a scout, the team will be at a disadvantage in terms of intelligence and situational awareness. It is important to note that all roles are important, and a well-balanced team will have players filling all the roles in order to be successful. I've said forever that there's a place for everybody on the battlefield. It's just, if you want to learn the progression system of Hell Let Loose, your best bet is clearly start as a rifleman. I don't want to veer away from that. Get used to just how the game moves and plays out and, you know, learn by a squad leader telling you where to go and what to do, stuff like that. But then you should really hop into a support role and play it out till you're rank 10. Not only will you eventually get the useless flamethrower, but it's just a good role to play out to 10. And then once you understand where to drop supplies, how to drop supplies, 
uh, move to engineer and place nodes and do whatever you can to fix vehicles and do whatever. Once you learn the engineer role, you'll have an idea of how the nodes work. And then eventually you can hop into a commander role and understand why nodes are so important and how they generate, in a sense, money for the commander to use to buy stuff like, you know, bombing runs and stuff. Now, I know a lot of you know this from preaching to the choir here, but for whoever sees this video and is interested, even chat GPT, uh, not in the degrading way, but even it knows how to play the game and what you should be doing and what's important. So let's see what else it knows. Is there any tricks to hell let loose? Now, I might not even have to keep typing hell let loose, but I'm going to keep doing it. Here are some tips and tricks that can help new players in hell let loose. Communicate effectively. Communication is key to success in the game. Players should use the in-game voice chat to coordinate with their team and give updates on enemy positions and call for reinforcements, supplies, and artillery support. Use cover. The game is realistic. Bullets will travel through cover, but it will reduce the damage dealt. Players should take advantage of the terrain and buildings to protect themselves from enemy fire. Prioritize objectives. The game's objectives are key to winning. Players should prioritize capturing and defending objectives over killing enemies. That's an important point, and I know it's fun shooting enemies, believe me, I, I know, uh, but it really is the purpose of the game. Balance your team. A well-balanced team will have players filling all of the roles. Make sure to have medics, engineers, scouts, and other roles to make sure that the team is well-equipped for the objective. Learn the maps. The maps are quite detailed. Players should take the time to learn them. Know the choke points and the best routes to objectives. You can do this by just going into an empty server, picking the map you want, and and learning it. Like there, there's still some places I swear I've never been in this game. So there's there's a lot to uh, to take in. Use vehicles wisely. Vehicles can be powerful but also vulnerable. They should be used to support the team and not go lone wolf. That's that Rambo mode I've been talking about. Um. <coughs> You know, there's always that guy who's uh, honking the horn the entire way while driving through enemies, uh, you know, to make sure, or driving through friendlies, making sure that the friendlies get out of his way when in reality he's just giving away the position of the truck. It's the most annoying shit. I, I, I don't even know <laughs> why, why people do it, but <laughs> I guess you just add a, a button that says you can and people will hit that button, you know? Um, but another thing is, one of the other things that's pretty irritating about the beginning of the matches and the trucks, specifically the supply truck, is a lot of the time I just see an engineer grab it, go to the front, start building nodes, and sure, by that time, if a commander's in, he can drop supplies near the, near the red and spawn in another supply truck. But in order for everybody to get to the battle the quickest is have a squad leader hop in that supply truck with an engineer, have a... Uh, the squad leader dropped the supplies just over the the second to third set of squares, the sectors there, and always build behind it, build in the second sector. That way, if you lose the middle point and your, we'll call it the fourth point or second point, then your nodes will still be up during the game. I, I, I see this with garrisons too. People just cannot help themselves and they're building a garrison five feet into the red and of course the moment it's up it's locked so i you know a lot of you guys out there need to really zoom in on the map and see where you're placing things uh, the game does let you zoom in so try that out and try to put more garrisons in the blue if the supplies will allow it it's better for you to spend a, a minute or two extra trying to find the perfect place to put that in the blue than to have you just put it down right away in the red now it's useless and now the commander has to use resources to take it down or other squad leaders are going to tell you to go take it down because if you build a Gary, you can take it down. Nobody else can besides commander. And a lot of you guys, once you get it up, you think good to go. I've done my part and now I'm moving on. But a lot of the time that garrison you put up is shit and the whole entire 
team is waiting for that Garris- Gary to go down so they can build a new one in the blue. So be aware of the red zone garrisons. I, I really enjoyed the game a lot more when they only allowed airheads in the red, no garrisons in the red, and the game was a frontline battle. Uh, and it got you in quicker. You, you know, if you counted the amount of minutes you spend in the death screen, it's absurd on some matches. For some of you guys that are newer to the game and still dying a lot, I mean, I, I'm willing to bet in an hour and a half, you're spending 20 minutes at least in that death screen, uh, which is stupid. Um, they should also take out the penalty for redeploying. Uh, redeploying penalty should not be a kill. And just because I'm on a little bit of a rant here, I'm going to say that once an enemy is downed, and he needs a medic to be revived, I don't think a grenade should give a team kill. It didn't used to be that way, um, so why they added it like that is just really stupid. Um, the amount of times I've been shot while trying to throw a grenade and the grenade lands at my feet, I mean, you know, but I, but I kill myself with my own grenade. It's just so dumb. But let's move on here. Be patient. The game is realistic and battles can take quite a while to play out. Players should be patient and not rush. This is a huge problem. It's been a problem since update nine. People don't even have a garrison up and they're already pushing for the next objective. And it it just doesn't make any sense. I get that you want to be the hero and you think you're going to get up there and you're going to get the most kills. The amount of times I have been the first to an objective is in the thousands. And the amount of times I've died instantaneously is probably 50 50 so don't think you can just be a hero it's really important that one of you leaders build a garrison where you're at have someone come in as supplies if you tell someone to come in as supplies and they don't do with supplies and they don't do it then kick them out of your squad for someone that will and kick every one of them out who doesn't seem to want to do it the more people that learn how to play support and just come in drop supplies maybe you got the ammo loadout, drop your ammo on grenades and then redeploy in back into the role you were in. I don't know why you, you, you can't do that. You know, like it's so simple to do. Also, if you're in the red, you can have someone come in, drop supplies, have someone switch out, come in and drop supplies. Now you have a hundred supplies in the red where you can build a garrison without the need for the commander to drop supplies on you and give your position away. It's, it's these little tactics in the game that will make a successful push to the enemy line. Of course, the enemy thinks you're going to be coming straight in from the the next objective. So why wouldn't they just wait there to take you out? But I still see a lot of guys running straight up the same damn road they just died on and just rinse and repeat that same (laughs) terrible gameplay mechanic uh, until they get sick of the game and leave or something, you know? Um, (laughs) Always be aware of your surroundings. The game is quite realistic. Players should always be aware of what's happening around them and be ready to react quickly. Yeah, exactly. It's not what's in front of you. It's around you. And I'm sure some of you guys with the widescreen monitors or even the the larger curved monitors, I'd I'd like to hear what that's like. So if you have one of those and you use it, put post it in the comments what it's like. And if you have a comparison of playing on a flat monitor, um, just put those comparisons up. I'd love to hear what the difference is in in Hell Let Loose because I've you know long thought about if I had purchased a a, a widescreen curve monitor like a you know a, what I don't even know what they are a thirteen eighty by uh or no I guess it'd be thirty eight forty by you know fourteen forty or whatever it'd be for those ultra wide I think that'd be so fun maybe it's useless in first person shooters and maybe it's just more fun in you know like racing games or whatever other games but I don't know interested to see if even I'll let loose can handle that wide of a screen. Following these tips and tricks can help new players have a better understanding of the game and improve their gameplay. But keep in mind that it is a team-based game, so effective teamwork and cooperation should be prioritized. This is where the game is falling apart. And, you know, chat GPT, taking all this information from the internet, the amount of times this paragraph has been stated is, is it's not even countable. This is this has been a factor since day one. Uh, this is one of the first things I learned was to stay with your squad lead. And it helps. It really helps a lot. <laughs> you have a lot of incentive to stay with your squad leader. All right, let's see. What else can we ask it? Well, they didn't mention the support role, did they? 
what is this support role in Don't laugh at my typing. <laughs> in Hell Let Loose, the support role is a class of soldiers that are equipped with the capability to provide heavy firepower and sustain the team's ammo supply. They are equipped with machine guns and are able... Okay. Uh, I hope that's something we get in the future. <laughs> Maybe we can give the medics a grease gun. I know how pissed off people got last time I said that, but... Seriously, I think the game's evolved to the point where the medics need a bit more power. Machine guns are able to provide high volume of fire to suppress enemies and cover the team's advance. Their main role is to provide covering fire, suppress the enemy, and cover their team's advance. They can also provide ammo to other players, allowing them to continue the fight. The support role is often used to cover choke points or to provide cover fire for the team while they advance. They can be a great asset to the team, but they are also vulnerable to enemy fire, so it's important to have a balanced team with other roles to provide cover for them. Additionally, supports have the ability to call for a supply drop, which will bring in a crate filled with ammo, grenades, and other supplies. This can be especially useful when the team is running low on ammo or when they're trying to hold an objective. So we see that ChatGPT got just a little bit wrong here. Also, I, I don't think supports should, you know, ever have the ability to call in a supply drop. That should be a squad leader who's going to be able to do something with those supplies anyways. Um, <laughs> as far as the, the heavy firepower, uh, I'm not sure the carbine really fits that. But either way. All right, let's see what the commander does. Let's try to be more complex about it. What abilities does the commander have in let loose in hell let loose the commander has several abilities that allow them to support their team and influence the battle these abilities include artillery strike Commanders can call in an artillery strike on a designated area, which can be used to damage or destroy enemy fortifications, vehicles, and troops. So, yeah. I mean, technically, the artillery should be something the commander can turn on and off. It should be maybe uh, you get enough, um, I don't know, probably use it under the fuel section of the nodes and you know, maybe it costs 300 fuel and you get 10 minutes. Uh, this would allow the commander to keep his munitions up for bombing runs. Because one thing I see a lot, and this is because there's just people who don't who have never played engineer and don't understand the node system. But when you use artillery, each shell costs five munitions. And some of you guys are, you know, three deep on artillery hammering away and you're not watching the node system. And, and it, in reality, all three of you on artillery should just be engineers at first. Go build nodes and hop on artillery. Then you're good all game. Like, and then you're getting points the entire game too by those nodes building up. So, I mean, it's a win-win, really. If you're going to play artillery, go build a set of nodes first, then go to artillery. It is literally, you're going to get so many more points. But, you know, it would be nice if Commander could turn artillery on and off or have a you know, set window time that it would be available. Or even make it more complex where artillery can be destroyed and maybe you have to get your engineers back to the HQ to rebuild it. I mean, you're still going to have that spawn point bullshit where people are just going to camp the spawn as sniper because that's fun to do all game. Um, that mechanic definitely needs to go away. They could do something better with the artillery. If they get deployable mortars in the game, I hope artillery just goes away. We don't need any any more of that terrible mechanic in the game and one thing that used to be a lot better was uh artillery used to be able to destroy garrisons and it should still be destroying garrisons that way people would understand the importance of building garrisons and know that it could disappear at any second and then artillery couldn't just sit there and spam your garrison every 40 seconds it it's, it was just a really dumb decision that Black Matter made, and, and nobody asked for that decision. 
So why they changed it is completely in their court. But regardless, we are stuck with what we're stuck with. Recon plane. Commanders can call in a recon plane to spot enemies and reveal their positions. This can be used to gain advantage and to plan out the team's attack. Yeah, artillery is great. If you have a squad leader that knows how to use the marks, then you can hard mark where each one of these enemies are with an attack marker, uh, defense marker, move marker, whatever you want, and, and pinpoint, zoom into the map and put those markers on there and then pull up your HUD when you're in game and you can just shoot at those markers and maybe get a headshot. It's, uh, and then another thing that I don't think a lot of players understand, only people in your squad can see your squad's pings. If someone in your squad pings, only you guys can see it, not the whole team. Another thing is, is even with like tank marks, for instance, if a squad leader, if, if you ask a squad leader to hard mark that tank that everybody's talking about, and he says there's already a mark up, well, then he doesn't realize that you can't see other squad leaders' marks. So he has to mark that squad or that tank in order for his own squad to see the tank mark. So when you see five, six, seven tank marks in one location, that's a good thing. Supply drop. Commanders can call for a supply drop, which will bring in the crate filled with ammo, grenades, and other supplies. This can be especially useful when the team is running low on ammo or when they're trying to hold an objective. Yeah, that, that full big ammo crate thing. I mean, it's cool. I, it's definitely a positive. Smoke barrage. Commanders can call in smoke barrage on designated areas, which can be used to obscure the enemy's vision and cover the team's advance. Well, Clearly, we know artillery is the only one that can drop smoke. It would be nice if a uh, commander could also, you know, dictate a smoke barrage. That would be awesome. That'd actually be fantastic. A lot of you guys out there are, you know, you'll be two people hiding behind a fence and someone throws smoke and then runs out right away as if you're not just running out into a blank area where the smoke didn't have time to cover yet. And why throw smoke when? Two people can clearly see where the enemy's at. The minute you throw smoke, you're just going to have an MG or a tank shoot into that smoke and get kills. It's the dumbest thing ever. It, people in this game, you really need to learn when to use smoke. It's just extremely annoying. Again, if you're a medic and you're throwing it in there, you want to get the revives. Cool. No one cares about that. But when you're, you know, <laughs> a squad leader and you throw smoke and uh, you you just literally blocked all the enemies your guys were killing, then you know, you've potentially risked the push you're about to take, especially when you run out and die right away. Um, you know, because what's coming next is we're all going to die unless we move and find a new position. Smoke gives away the position. Try to be, uh, try to hold back throwing the smoke whenever you can, you know. Tank reinforcement. Commanders can call in tank reinforcements, which can be used to break through enemy defenses and support the team's advance. Well, Maybe some of you guys know out there, maybe it's not getting the game proper, but it's, uh, yeah, commanders can, you know, spawn in tanks for tank drivers to use. Strategic map. Commanders have access to a strategic map that allows them to see the entire battlefield and the location of all friendly and enemy units. Yeah, that's not right either. We, we obviously can't see where the enemies are. It would be really cool if commanders um did have the ability to use like the admin cam without seeing enemies but have that kind of viewpoint where you could see all your guys on the battlefield granted that would probably promote some kind of campy commanders like the ones that sit out in hq the whole time which is fine i don't know how you're seeing what's on the battlefield or getting any accurate information unless you're out in the field but it would be kind of cool to get maybe a you know, a five second fly through of where your guys are at on the map. I think that'd be cool. Orders. Commanders can give orders to the squad leaders. Well, that's if they listen and follow direction, allowing them to focus on special objectives and to coordinate the team's actions. It really is what the game's all about. The game, it, hopefully, your commander has an idea, is watching the map, he sees where you guys are moving to. He can tell Abel he's going to drop supplies on him to get in a spot where he can build a garrison. Hopefully, Abel communicates back. The plan goes through. You now have an attacking Gary. You're now making the push. You're now taking the objective. That's the way it should go. But most of the time, it 
It just doesn't. Sometimes enemies, nobody's talking on the enemy team. Nobody's coming up with a plan. Nobody's doing nothing. So the entire team is spread out really far. That makes it really hard to get a push, uh, especially if, if they've completely surrounded you. Nobody's talking. You don't know what direction they're coming in from. They're not coming in as a group. Everybody thinks they have their own special way to get in. And pretty soon you make one kill when you see a guy and now you're getting shot in the back because the other guy's coming around the other side of a building or something. So you have to be wary of that too. The commander role is very important in the game. A good commander can make a big difference in the outcome of the battle. They are the ones that should coordinate the overall strategy of the team and use their abilities. Oh, and the use of their abilities can greatly benefit the team. It's 100% true. I've won many games without a commander. So it, it is possible. As long as you have people building garrisons, yeah, the bombing runs are nice to help you push, but you, you know, you can win games without a commander. I've even jumped in as commander just to drop supplies to build a Gary and hop back out. So, I mean, it, you, you can do a lot without a commander still. All right. Let's try to go a little deeper. What can the community expect out of Let Loose in 2023? As of my knowledge cut off in 2021, there were no official announcements from Black Matter, the developer of Hell Let Loose, about the game's plans for 2023. However, it's not uncommon for developers to continue to support and update their games post-launch, and I would expect them to continue to do so. The developers have been continu continuously working on the game since its launch, releasing updates, patches, adding new features, weapons, vehicles, and fixing bugs. It is likely that the developer will continue to support the game and players can expect to see new content, bug fixes, and performance improvements. They may also release new maps and game modes as well as expanding the game's current features. Game modes would be awesome. I would really like some new game modes. I, I mean, I, I just think this team could do so much more, even with what they already have that, you know, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe it's a huge feat to add other game modes, but I, I would have thought by now we would have had maybe something different, uh, maybe a infantry only game mode, uh, maybe a tanks only game mode that would be kind of cool um, you know but I guess right now you can only get I think it's five vehicles on the map at once um, I, I did just learn that <laughs> for a commander to even spawn in a heavy tank they have to move one of the tanks in HQ just so it drops there I, that's kind of funny but either way it's important to note that the above is just speculations and that there are no official announcements from Black Matter it's best to keep an eye on their official website or social media for any official news or updates. Yeah, that's a good sentence there. I like that. I, I get if this like cut off in 2021. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really go on their Discord that often. I, I think it's uh, kind of a disastrous mess there. But to each their own. All right. What else can we ask it about Hell Let Loose? What do the views say about Let Loose in the 2021? Uh, let's go 2021. As of my knowledge, cut off in 2021. Hell Let Loose generally, generally received positive reviews from critics and players. Reviewers play, praised the game for its large-scale battles and realistic gameplay, as well as its detailed map and terrain system. Many also praised the game's authentic weapons and vehicles, and a variety of the roles available to players. However, some reviewers also noted that the game has a steep learning curve and that it can be difficult for new players to get into. Some also pointed out, that the game's performance was not always optimal and that there were bugs and glitches present. 
Overall, the game has been well received by the community. Many players enjoy the game's realism, the strategic aspect of the game, and the impression and the immersion that it provides. However, as the game is a bit complex, it's not for everyone. Some players might find it slow or find it hard to get into. Yeah, that's it's definitely going to vary from person to person. For myself, I, when I left Battlefield Five, I was just over the the cheaters and the raised time to kill and all these new players they added aim assist during the 6.2 update and now new players never playing the game before could just come in and mop you up with you know controller aim assist and a higher time to kill and as you know I'm, i play with a controller and pc doesn't have any aim assist um, i i don't like aim assist i prefer not to have it i want to you know, track my enemy perfectly. I don't need this thing pulling the stick in a direction that it thinks it wants to go. Um, I don't know how anybody plays with that. I can't imagine playing it on console. I know Hell Let Loose for console uh, when it first came out, the aim assist was extremely strong and it would fully pull your controller while a guy ran behind a hedge. Uh, and so I'm I'm glad that's been curbed. But in my opinion, I'll I'll say it. I think aim assist is cheating. I don't think it matters what peripheral you feel comfortable using. I think any form of coded aim assisting is cheating. And, you know, I mean, some people have even said, how do I have good recoil control in this game? Well, using a controller, I only have to hold the controller stick in one spot to control recoil, where you guys with a mouse have to, you know, pull down on the mouse gradually to control that recoil. So there's going to be a difference there. For me, I guess technically that might be an advantage of using a controller, but where aim assist comes into play, the whole reason aim assist was invented is so that controller players with a joystick would already, the motion aiming at the enemy would already pull before your stick hits center to cross over from going left to right or right to left or whatever. So it was to assist you in getting that directional pull before your reaction time was crossing the stick back over center to the other side. I think that's just dumb. And I think that's cheating, regardless of how strong the aim assist is. And then Hell Let Loose, I mean, you guys who've been with me a long time have seen the shots I've taken. Over time, you just get used to where the placement is, where you think it'll be. Now, don't get me wrong. I miss thousands of shots <laughs> so when i when i land a good one i i, I like to show it because you know not only am i super excited that it even happened because this just doesn't happen all the time for me you know i gotta play lots of hours in order to get one great headshot clip you know so yeah well let's see here so far i'm pretty impressed with what chat gpt has been able to come up with here i think it's interesting that we have this kind of database I, I i did read that these the people who created this also had to put uh a hamper on some things that were being typed into it to uh you know <laughs> kind of like to figure out some things that were used to be in the anarchist cookbook um so um, i guess i'm glad that that's clamped down because of course someone's just going to type that when you have this kind of system right all right, let's go real deep. How can the developers make a, let's add the of let loose Or new players. Hopefully, it knows that. There are several ways that the developers of Hell Let Loose can make a better experience for new players. Introduce a tutorial or training mode. A tutorial or training mode can help new players learn the game's mechanics and understand the different roles and abilities. This can make it easier for them to get started and understand the game's complex systems. Simplify the UI and controls. The game's UI and controls can be confusing for new players. Simplifying them can make it easier for new players to navigate and understand the game. I, I really liked the old UI system. I don't, I don't know why they had to change it because 
the old one when you clicked in you know uh to enlist to get into a server the server list would just pop up instantaneously and it, you just get into one and now it's like this long delay where it has to search for all the servers or something and one thing i really don't like is not only the the garrisons by numbers on the on the death screen like if if you die and you come back in you see the map before you spawn in you see the garrison one two three op one two three whatever nobody uses that shit Uh, it was a console implementation and maybe people use it then but when i'm already in game and my squad leader tells me to re you know to that he's got enemies by garrison three there's nothing in the game that tells you what garrison three is so why they even have that there is stupid they need to move back up where it has the servers info, maybe the rules or whatever. That used to be where the where the garrison one, two, and three section is, and and below that used to be the legend for the map in full size. Now you have to when you're on the map, you can hit the enter button, and the legend will pop up in full size, so you know what all the symbols are. I don't really think that that helped at all. And the only other thing I really don't like about the UI is when you go to redeploy, the game used to have uh, redeploy on the left side and leave server on the right side. I might be switching those two, but that used to be on two separate sides of the screen. So there was zero mistake when hitting, exiting a game or leaving, or uh, redeploy or exiting the game. Too many people have accidentally hit that, that, leave server instead of redeploy button because they're right next to each other like it's just one of those things that shows these guys do not play their own game because that if you did one of you would have done it and you would have brought that information back to your people and said let's change this around um and i would imagine that couldn't take more than five minutes to fix to be honest and you know maybe 15 minutes but you could move that redeploy thing up to the up to the top of all of it and leave the leave server at the bottom and that would prevent that so you know just one of those things you guys could do a little better on in making the game just you know not hate you when you play it it reminds you of of all of its faults every time you go to play it and i I don't know what you guys recently i've been having issues i know kursk is is crashing for everybody i've been having game crashes constantly since this update um, I, I don't understand what the problem is. Uh, the one I had just last night just crashed to the desktop. No Unreal Engine error, no nothing. Um, so I don't, I don't know what that was all about. Um, I've had the grenade glitch and then my gun not firing and then reloading the gun only for it to automatically fire right as it's done reloading. I don't understand what's going on with that shit either. Uh, I know it's happened to other people in our Discord. so. I, these are things that really need to be dialed in here before this game needs to move forward with more content. Fix Stalingrad, fix all the old bugs that that people just cannot stand, and then move forward from there. I know it's not fun work, and I know it's not an update that would bring in a ton of money. Uh, you know, the players would prefer, I think, constant updates. Where a company wants to prefer one large update where they can market it, sell it, get more players in, and whatever. And I, Totally understand. You got to do what you got to do. But it would be nice if you guys could spend one of these updates in 2023 just focusing on performance and bug fixes. We would all love it. Like the whole community would really appreciate it. All all 8,000 of you that are playing right now would really appreciate it. Offer more detailed explanations of the roles and abilities. The game has a variety of roles and abilities. Providing more detailed explanations of these can help new players understand the game mechanics and how to best contribute to the team. This is where I just think they, they could do so much more to help people understand their own product. Um, you know, the, we're not talking about a toilet here. If someone was selling you a toilet and they actually had to convince you on, you know, pressing the button and it all goes away, um, you know, that'd be one hell of a salesman, I'm sure, by the end of it. So it'd be really nice if these Black Matter devs could. Uh, teach people their own game. It it's just, I would think, pretty standard nowadays. We're not we're not playing Fall Guys here, um, which I'm sure even has a tutorial of some sort. 
um, we're, we're playing a super complex game with a steep learning curve and no tutorial. Add more in-game tips and hints. In-game tips and hints can help new players understand the game's mechanics and how to play effectively. Yeah, tips and hints would help too. If, if, for instance, if they added a tip on like where you can place a garrison, then it has to be on like flat ground. You can't really put it in most trenches. Uh, and that sometimes the textures interfere with where you can put it. I've, I've heard people go with supplies. Like, I can't put my supplies on. It's not letting me put it down there. Um, well, yeah, you just got to move 10 feet over and usually it lets you put it down. Um, I don't know what it is. It's textures in the game that have an issue. They're all over the place. It's the same reason why you are running up through Hurtgen Forest and all of a sudden uh, a tiny little stick on the ground is holding you up from moving. It's, it's the same situation. Oh, and, you know, fences that are wide enough to drive a truck through that, that you can't walk through because uh, for some reason there's an invisible wall there. Like all that stuff, they got to get that out of the game. They got to go back through these maps. They got to go back through Stalingrad, optimize Stalingrad. Um, that map's kind of been left out in the dark. Um, and now Kursk is giving people trouble and crashing their game. So Kursk never had a problem. That was really one of the best running maps in the game. Uh, so I'd like to see all that stuff fixed. And, you know, I'm sure they would too. You know, I'm sure the devs would too. I'm sure they'd love to have this game be in just a perfect working order performance wise so they could focus on content too. Uh, it's just, you know, one of those things. You got to get your hands dirty. You got to fix it and, and go from there. Improve the matchmaking system. New players may struggle to find matches with players at their skill level. Improving the matchmaking system can help ensure that new players are matched with other players at a similar skill level. I tried to do this with my server and do a 70 plus and have people join the Discord that are 70 plus. Um, you know, to get more of a, a skill based matchmaking type game where where you don't have to run around teaching people the game or watch your level one squad leader drop an OP in the HQ and, you know, run all over the map aimlessly without using a mic just to avoid stuff like that. Uh, give people a break. And, you know, so on my channel, you'll see some of the battle for the middle matches. Not everybody could show up at the times that we put. So it is what it is. But those matches were sweaty, sweaty. <laughs> And they were a lot of fun. They were intense. And you knew when you got gunned down, that you, you got gunned down by a skilled player. It just felt good to play the game in that level. Reduce the complexity of the game. Some players may find the game too complex. Reducing the complexity of the game can help make it more accessible to new players. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I think this game has already been babied to death for the, for the console kitties. And I don't think the game needs to be simplified anymore. I, it, you either learn the game or you, or you quit playing it. It's just that simple. If it's too tough for you, uh, then that's fine. It's fine by the entire player base. If you don't want to spend time to learn it, like anything worth learning in the world is going to be tough, then move on, go play your Fortnites and you know whatever else other game you're playing, maybe Desert, Desert Truck Simulator or whatever game you're into um, and leave hell at loose for the people who really want this type of experience. Milsim is a small genre. This game isn't, I guess, quite as difficult as Postscriptum. It's not like Squad, but it is way more hardcore than Battlefield or Call of Duty and actually takes some strategic planning and communication to be successful. And I, I think it sits in a good spot as far as the mill sim genre goes. So I you know, I think the game could evolve into something more complex. I would love to see the all the roles go up to uh level twenty instead of ten. And you know, if you're not gonna do that, then I would say if you reach level ten, you get to pick your own loadout. You get to design your own loadout in a load eight, loadout maker. And yeah, maybe like the rifleman role in Germany gets four grenades and two smokes. Well, maybe when you get to level 10, maybe that drops down to only, you know, your max you can pick. It's kind of a give and take thing where you get two grenades and two smokes instead uh, because you wanted the flamethrower instead of the car. You know, something like that, I think they could balance out, but it would reward people to get to level 10 and build your own custom loadout. And I think it'd make the game a lot of fun. I think the level nine assault having the STG and the satchel on Germany is 
the best best role in the game besides AT. AT is kind of in its own class, but I personally think the AT level or the assault level nine is an amazing loadout. And if you could even if you could have a custom level 10, I don't know what I would change, except for I would love to have two grenades, one smoke instead of one grenade, two smokes. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, back in the day, AT used to actually have four rockets, so you could take out these tanks as one person. Now, nowadays, if you got a heavy, it's going to take you three hits directly in the ass, and you're going to have to redeploy unless someone drops ammo, which means most likely someone else is going to get your kill. And the game doesn't count up the points as per hit, which it should. Um, I think that's something that they could really easily change that would fairly give points to maybe uh, an AT that got two hits on him and now he's retreating to HQ and you know you pop one off at 200 meters and get him. I, I, you know, great shot. You, you've got the reward, but I don't think you should get all the points for that. One thing I want to say on the matchmaking system too is I, I don't think, I mean, this game absolutely relies on more knowledgeable people teaching the, the, the new players. So I think the moment you get skill-based matchmaking, it's going to be like playing on console for the first six months that Hell Let Loose came out, which was just a disaster. I, I can't even imagine what it was like playing that game. It would have been terrible, uh, just a terrible experience. But maybe it forces some of you to join the PC side of things, which I, I, I feel is just a is the way to go for Hell Let Loose. There's so many of you guys that built a PC specifically to play Hell Let Loose. Uh, and I, I think that's amazing. You know, some, a game that's not loved by people enough to build the perfect PC for them to have a great experience in this game. That shows some dedication. Um, you know, like Fortnite, that'll run on a potato. So like, uh, you know, nobody's building a custom Fortnite PC to get 500 frames a second in that game. It just, nobody's doing it, but people will build a PC to try to get over, you know, a hundred FPS on Carrington uh, and maybe on Epic settings. All right. Improve the game performance. Some players have trouble running the game smoothly. Improving the game's performance can make it enjo more enjoyable for new players. Yes. This game should be in DX12 by default, or at least have a slider option in the game uh, for DX11 or DX12. It would be, I imagine, something really simple for them to do. Yeah, it's easy to do in Steam, but once again, it's something that the community found out and came up with to, to help the community have a better experience with this game. I've always said, I, I wonder what these devs at Black Matter have for computers to be able to. Uh, you know, test the game out. Uh, I would re really like to know. I mean, are you guys using like a 4790K old, you know, uh, old old Dell PC, fourth gen Intel? Uh, maybe you got 16 gigs of DDR3 in there. Like, what are you guys using? Like, are you using some crazy Threadripper PC, uh, you know, that tests the game and, you know, it's a $20,000 PC that none of us could ever even imagine playing a game on? Uh, is that what you're using and why you, you don't have these same issues that the average player base has? I did remember reading in the, in the Hell at Loose Discord a while back that when the game is in PTE, apparently none of these bugs that we experience in the regular game are, are there in the PTE. And apparently it has something to do with everybody being level 500. And all the guns unlocked. And that's just interesting. If any of you have played in the PTE or in the last PTE, did you experience any of the bugs that are still currently in the game today? I'd, I'd really like to know the answer to that question. Add more community support. Having a strong community can help new players learn the game and make friends. Developers could create a forum or a Discord server to provide space for players to discuss the game, share tips, strategies, offer new support to, play, to new players. This is a, a big deal. This is why this exists. Find a clan and play with them constantly. You'll eventually find some people you really enjoy gaming with and, and go from there. It, your experience will be so much better in Hell Let Loose. You can come out of your shell. You'll, you, you'll be able to talk to these people on a regular basis. You'll get comfortable with them. And then you might get comfortable just speaking out in game regularly um you know believe me it, i'm an introvert it took me a while to get used to it too 
Uh, but over time, you just have to communicate in the game. It just does make the experience so much better. And to the people who turned all the voice chats down, you're really doing yourself a disservice. So I, if you could take the time to turn those back up and maybe at least be able to listen to what's going on, mute individual players, sure. Yeah, I do that shit all the time. But you should be able to hear people in proximity chat. There's, you know, the satchel alone is just a stupidity magnet. The amount of times I've put one of those down, told everybody around me, and you still have eight people running right into the thing, and then they get mad in chat that you blew them up with a satchel when you told them there was a satchel, but they obviously can't hear you in proximity chat. Um, it, it's just unbelievable. I should, your satchel should have no team kill uh, penalty at all. If people die, it's their own fault. Uh, and as far as community support goes, yeah, um, you know, it, your game might have over a million copies sold, but there's only 8,000 people playing it on the regular. So anything you can do to keep your lines of communication open with your community, the better. Um, I, I, I remember uh, Max Ray had a 12-hour AMA, Ask Me Anything, on Reddit. There were thousands of questions. I read every single one of them. and. There was only uh, there was only six questions that were all the same damn questions from many different people that he answered. None of them were about bug fixes or performance. N none. He wouldn't answer any of those. He never answered a single one. I'm sure that that Reddit AMA is still up, and you could probably search it and find it and go read them for yourselves. But no, it was that's why me and, my, me and the people I play with we joke about wire cutters. Wire cutters being added to the game was something that was highly requested in update 10 and and up, update 9 that people want to be able to cut the barbed wire and move in well the developers actually promised that you'd be able to blow up the barbed wire with a satchel when in turn the only thing that happens is you can blow up man-made barbed wire but like hill 400 none of that barbed wire that creates all those choke points for one that didn't used to be in the game when they added it they told you that you'd be able to blow it up with a satchel you cannot blow that up with a satchel so it would really be nice to either see that stuff be able to be blown up. Uh, the wire cutter is just why it's such a funny point is it's the wire cutter is missing the mark, but it on the basic level of things, it's people requesting a way to do more in the game as simple as a pair of pliers and how simple that would be able to be added into the game. And it's just flat out ignored. Uh, meanwhile, things that go boom and blow up tanks don't don't blow up anything uh, around it, like barbed wire. Another thing with the barbed wire is at distance, it just looks like blocky color. It doesn't even render in when it should just disappear entirely. Um, and another thing is when you ping, if you're in front of barbed wire, it pings the barbed wire in front of you, although you can shoot through it. So there's just some issues with the barbed wire all around. And honestly, they should take it out of the game and on all the hard points and and on cursed like the little the little one foot strips that stick up that you can get caught on uh it's, it's just take the barbed wire out of the game it's not needed let people come in from any attack point on another note if you look at the map you'll see like the gray lines uh outside of the map um north or southeast or west whatever it may be but that used to be the entire size of the map where you actually could flank in from the edge of the map technically because you had 300 meters to 400 meters to run um, I, I really wish they'd bring back that because sometimes you just can't get up the side of a map. So community support is a good thing. I know they brought in the Wombat Medic. I, I don't know what that's all about. I've I've read her one of her posts on Discord. Uh, I don't even remember what she's talking about. It doesn't seem like a community outreach person that people can talk to. Uh, there was no way to reply to the to the message she had put out for everybody so i'm not sure what that is it almost seems like a here you you deal with these problems we'll just pay you and you deal with with all the requests and people being pissed off about the performance i'm not sure what that's all about i i think they should just go back to the old dev blog uh have this girl be putting out once a week putting one out once a week and you know let us know let us know what you're doing i mean we love hearing about that stuff there's plenty, you know, when you can build hype around your game, more people will want to do it. And if more content creators are reading your dev blog and making content based off that dev blog, that's just more getting out to people. But it's, 
you know, now what do we go through? Like they, they announced a while back they were going to stop doing the dev blog and it was going to be just periodically and that's fine, but it was kind of weak and, you know, kind of half-assed, but it was nice getting the weekly dev blog uh, and reading it, just seeing what you guys are working on, what we have to look forward to in the future. You guys would show us like images of the shotgun, maybe some animation that you're working on sound changes like that stuff was fucking cool dude we love that stuff so i really wish they would bring that back it's important to note that while some of these suggestions can make the game more accessible for new players it could also change the game for existing ones so the developers should consider carefully and balance the needs of both new and existing players that's where the issue lies they don't care about the existing players there's nothing about the existing players that interest them because so many people that are veterans of the game aren't going to buy your cosmetics. They already bought the game a long time ago. They've been playing it for years without that shit. They're, they're not interested in paying you more money when they would gladly pay you more money if you fix the problems in the game. Um, yeah, I, I would definitely, if you, if you came out with a, a bug fix update, except it's going to cost everybody $10, I would pay that in a heartbeat. As long as it actually worked, as long as it actually was tested, tried and true and fixed and not claimed to be fixed, then I would definitely rather spend $10 on, uh, on an expansion update for bug fixes than I would be for cosmetics. And new players, they come from games that have cosmetics. So yeah, they might be interested in that. Um, you know, we all see the guys running around in white because they didn't change their winter outfit. Like, come on, guys. Like, that's your attempt at this? You guys didn't see that that, that was going to be a problem that someone has to go in and change it, everyone, instead of just switching it between winter maps and day maps or spring maps, whatever you want to call them? Like, come on, guys. That was a fucking weak-ass attempt at, at adding snow outfits as if that's what's getting people into the game. It's not. Getting people into the game would be a, a community coming together and saying this game is awesome now the bugs are fixed medium spec hardware is getting 100 plus fps on carrington uh on high settings then yeah no more loadout bug no more grenade bug i i mean i know you guys would love to have that fixed too and i know the developers would probably love to stop hearing about it but these are the issues that plague the game that where it separates it from being a triple a title with you know, massive bank accounts and probably some of the best developers ever to a team that started with 15 people grew to 70 and now is who knows with team 17's purchase. I'm sure it's doubled that even, but while we all would love the game to be smooth and operate better, it's still one of the main reasons people leave uh, is they just get tired of it. I, we joke around in the discord, but I swear when you get over level 200, the game comes up with these, ways for shit to not work and then you die and, and it just happens constantly it's a joke but it's it's just funny it's like the game the higher you rank up the more it works against you and <laughs> it would be kind of funny if it was planned obsolescence like that <laughs> in preparation for hell at list hell at least two which i think is another funny topic i i i know there's people out there who love talking about the future of gaming and stuff like that but to even talk about a hell let loose too when the first one isn't even dialed in like not even close then i just think it's amusing to talk about anything that could be in the future but i will say yes if they do go to a vietnam route then people would be pretty excited for that for sure um i think we've had enough world war one games to last a lifetime i think people can probably ditch the world war world war one aspect of things um there's plenty of those games that are fun to play World War Three. I think we all learned that the Battlefield 2042, the experience of that, the problems, the bugs, the classes, the everything about that game being an issue. Um, we don't need future FPS too. We we got stuff like that. There's Halo. You know, you want something futuristic? There you go. Um, but <laughs> the more theaters you can cover in World War Two, uh, I think the better. If you can jump up and maybe put out a hell at loose two in the vietnam era i mean i i think that would be a, a spectacular idea not sure what do you guys think what do you guys 
want to see in Hell Let Loose 2. It's fun to talk about. I think it's pointless because the first one still isn't even you know, complete yet. Uh, but who knows? Maybe the game will never be complete and we'll see a Hell Let Loose 2 beforehand and then you'll have that separation of people who still want to play the old one versus the new one, which would be cool. Uh, but you know, it's kind of like when you saw Battlefield 5 have three times as many players playing it still as Battlefield 2042. It kind of let those devs know that Hey man, we're not happy with the way this game is, and you know, could you do something about that? Well, when investors start losing their money, that's when stuff uh, changes. So when you vote with your money, that's when you're going to see the change that you want to see, and that's what I feel about Hell Let Loose. Uh, I, if I was to buy the game, yeah, I wouldn't pay full price for it at all. I would definitely buy it when it's on sale, but just know that when you buy it on sale, you're playing with a bunch of new players and. It's not going to be the full-on Hell Let Loose experience. It's going to be a watered-down version where people are still trying to get their footing in the game. So, you know, understand that, it, you know, the experience is different on many servers. You have your good servers and you have your bad servers. Just find one that you like to play on, with people you like to game with, and enjoy the game for what it is. It is a lot of fun. I can't say enough about it. I just cleared 2,800 hours in the game. And I still enjoy the game. I still want to play the game. It's it's a lot of fun. Even when I go to play Battlefield One, like I really enjoy the sniping, like you know the up close combat, the maps. The, the game just runs beautiful. It looks beautiful. Like stuff like that's pretty fun, you know. But something about Hell Let Loose always draws me back. I'm not sure if it's that headshot sound alone, if it's the intensity, if it's the communication. Kind of like this whole ball of yarn and it has all these little strands coming off it and and each one is right around the corner that like triggers that you know part of your brain brain like a casino addict you know i don't know if that's uh planned into it like that but I, it, there's just something about this game that's a lot of fun all right let's finish this up with one last question it's kind of hard we got to Think back if the cutoff for chat GPT was in 2021, then all right, let's just go. Let's go like this. What is what is the hardest thing to learn in how let loose? Let's see. The hardest thing to learn in Hell Let Loose can vary depending on the individual player. But some of the more challenging aspects of the game that a new player may struggle with include game mechanics. The game has a variety of mechanics and systems such as roles and abilities, the map and terrain system, and the vehicles. It can take some time for new players to fully understand these mechanics and how they work. Strategic gameplay. The game encourages teamwork, communication, and strategic thinking. Players will all have to work together with their team in order to secure objectives and call for reinforcement supplies or artillery support. For new players, it might take some time to understand the strategic aspect of the game and to be able to coordinate effectively with their team. Realistic gameplay. Game is quite realistic. Okay, we've, we've read this. Maybe that's given me the same answer as before. performance some players may have trouble running the game smoothly on their computer this can make the game more difficult for them to play yeah it's if you got your timing dialed in and you have a specific like sensitivity setting then when anything changes in the game to deal with latency or or performance like you're gonna feel it you know again communication can't speak enough about that learning the roles each role has their abilities and equipment yeah like i said before start out as rifleman Work up to like level 20. And then from level 20, jump to support. Play support. Just play it straight through to level 10. And then jump into engineer. Play engineer. Then go to squad lead or whatever. And then jump to commander. Those are the most important roles. Everything else is is basically useless. You know, basically you're just shooting things in the game if you're playing any other roles than those. So Overall, the game is quite complex. It will take some time for new players to master the game mechanics and understand the different roles. However, with practice and experience, players will be able to learn and improve their gameplay. Yeah, this this is with anything. Uh, with anything you do, from riding a bike to cooking, it doesn't matter. 
practice and experience. When you hop into this game, you're, you could be gaming with people who are absolute assassins in this game and have been playing it for thousands of hours. You may think, oh, some shot was suspicious. And in reality, some guy just beamed you from 300 meters away through a bush because he saw you run by it. it. You just never know in this game. So just take your time. It's going to be a long learning curve. As long as you know that ahead of time, I think you'll be fine. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it, you guys. Have a great rest of your week.